let's get some reaction from uh, what has been a, a troublesome few days, to put it mildly, in the England camp. The next play on Saturday against Australia in Ahmedabad against this backdrop of criticism from all corners of the cricketing world, talk of an unstable dressing room, questions about the coach, and now, of course, facing a sixth defeat in seven. The ever-honest bowler, Mark Wood, has been addressing the situation with the BBC's Adam Mountford. Well, Mark, you're obviously known as one of the more positive members of this England team, you know, the sort of person to spread that sort of energy, but how difficult has it been over the last few days? Yeah, it's been challenging, um, I'm not going to lie, not just the last few days, I think the last couple of weeks, um, but we're in the position we're in, uh, no hiding from it, so um, in terms of positivity, um, yes, there hasn't been many positive results, but we've got to try and stick together as a team, and you know, these last couple of games, if we can get some sort of positive outcome, um, win these last three games I mean it's a big game against Australia we always want to beat our rivals so um, that would be certainly a small positive um, in the in the near future if we can beat them You mentioned Australia I mean you've, you personally you've got some very good memories of recent games against Australia They've, those last couple of games or so in, in the ashes does that give you some, at least some positive thoughts ahead of the game of the weekend? I think we've got to try and remember how good a team we, were, we are I, I think we're, if there's no way I can sort of say we're, we're, nobody's performed well uh, maybe one or two people are, are performed at the level but there's you know sometimes when people are out of form or, or confidence is low you maybe it's one or two in the team but not seven or eight and we just it's not through lack of trying um, you know the nets were working really hard um, behind the scenes you know, you know there's people in the gym there's lads doing things so I think to come to this game yes that there is sort of that sort of history behind things, but we've got to remember that we're a good team as well. I, I hope that it's not just one of them where you, you know you don't just become a bad team overnight. And we've got to remember, you know, the trust that we've got within the group. I know that maybe it hasn't gone the, the way we've gone, but I still believe it. I believe in the players that we've got in the group and that they can turn it turn it around because there's some fantastic, you know, one day players in that group. So um, we've got to believe in each other and, and believe that we can we can beat Australia. Have you got any idea what's going wrong? Honestly, no. Um, it's, a, it's kind of a strange one where I feel like we're putting in the hard work behind the scenes. Everybody's trying hard. Maybe it, you know, it's a case of um, we've gotten a couple of bad results and then confidence is low. I'm, I'm not sure, but um, from from my own personal point of view, I think I could have been a bit more consistent. I've, I've not been as consistent as I would like, um, and that certainly hurt me. In games, I feel I've bowled well, and then in other games, I've bowled you know pretty poorly so um, that consistency hasn't been there and when that's happened to two or three of the bowling group instead of just one then that's when it really hurts the side so um, you know like I say no hiding from it we've not performed how we would like but we've got a chance in these th last three games to I guess restore a little bit of pride Is it a lack of playing 50 over cricket? No nah. um, no nah, this is a World Cup winning group so I, I wouldn't want to use any excuse we've just not played at the level we should have and never speak, there's going to be criticism, as you'd expect, from, what, from what's been going on. There's all sorts of things flying around. One about is whether the, the team and, and the coach are connecting enough. Would you say there's full support for Matthew Mott amongst the, the team at the moment? For a World Cup winning coach? Support for a World Cup winning coach? Yeah. Absolutely. So there's absolutely no doubt. So the, the reports you know, suggesting that perhaps there isn't isn't the, the quite support for the from the players for the coach. As far as you're concerned, there's no, no issue there at all. If if the players are looking at other people, then that's the players' fault. We get every support system going. We've got nutritionists. We've got strength condition coaches. We've got physios. We've got people uh, local Indian coaches dog sticking at the lads. As a player, you've got everything you need. The coach can only set about. We get tactics. We get. Uh, analyst, there's nothing different to how we've done it the last seven years since I've been involved with England. Nothing different. So it's, you kind of pin everything on the coach. Sometimes the players have to look at themselves and give a bit of responsibility. I have not performed well enough in this World Cup. I'm frustrated. I'm gutted about it. You know, I feel like I've you know let my some people down at home and things like that. And I, that hurts me. And it, the rest of the group is hurting as well. So I don't think you can just pin it on the captain, the coach all the time. Sometimes, you know. You've got to look at yourself and say, look, I just haven't been good enough. Or what can I do to get better? It's not, it's not fair to always put on other people. And again, people are searching. One of the things that's been written this week is the fact that the, the contracts came out during the tournament. That was a factor. Was that anything, anything at all? Has that been a distraction? No, I think it's... No, I think if you're looking for excuses to why we've not played, performed well, we've done the same thing that we've done for, for seven years. The contracts come out the same time every year. Lads 
you know, play golf in their downtime every every t- every tour we go on. We've got the same setup in terms of nets and the way that we go about things. We've even tried to change things up a little bit at times to to try and find something new. Is it because we need to try something else? Is it because we need? So I, I don't think we should look for an excuse. We've just not performed to the level we've got to recently. And when we've lost a couple of games, I think confidence has got uh, been knocked, and we haven't performed to the level that's been required. It's as simple as that. Just talk about the contracts. You've got a three-year deal, which I'm sure you're, you're very pleased with. There was some talk that, you know, franchise leagues are around, that you might be tempted, as, as a lot of players are, by that sort of thing. But you've obviously gone with this three-year England deal. Was that a difficult decision with, I imagine, temptations to play elsewhere? No. Um, to play for England is always, you know, my pity. I was trying to think of my family, um, and that was the decision that was probably best for them. But from a selfish point of view, I've always wanted to play for England. Um, and... Th- you know, the contract is one that I'm delighted with and um, to, to have three years and be an England player is something I always grew, grew up wanting to be. So um, that's something that, you know, I can safely say I'm, I'm really happy with. And have you sort of been mapping out how things might look because you've got a test series back here in India uh, in a few months' time? Is that something you're desperate to be part of or are you sort of looking that far ahead at this stage? Yeah, um, always you're, you're mapping out what, what you think could be upcoming and, and for me that is something if I'm selected that, you know, I'd love to be a part of. Um, like I say, the, with the three-year contract um, in, in all forms, I would hope that um, I could be in the mix for, for that tour and that's something that I'm certainly thinking about. And just looking again for the rest of this tournament, OK, England's chances of qualifying are incredibly slim, but there's so much more to play for, I imagine, for you as a team. As you say, you really want to perform, don't you? Yeah, and in some ways it could be the, the next little chunk of what career and 50 over cricket, you know, for... For myself, if I if I don't do the business, there's lads waiting in the wings. We've got, you've seen lads in the recent Island series and series before that. There's up and coming lads coming through. So um, it's not been easy, and yes, it is it is hard when you when you're losing. But we've got to try and find a way somewhere in national cricket. You've got to find a way of um, of getting a result. And I'll be doing everything I can to try and keep me place in the team. That's that's ultimately, and that's a bit selfish, not looking at it from a team point of view, but. You want to keep your spot and be a part of this this great side. It has been a great side, and you you want to stay within it. And of course, this Champions Trophy sideline, the idea that you need to finish in the the top seven teams, has another another carrot ahead, isn't it? Definitely. Um, obviously, we want to be part of these major competitions, and um, it, this has been so far obviously a bit of a disaster for, for, from our point of view. We don't want it to be like that come the end so everything to play for these last three games where it can be a disappointing tournament rather than a disaster ever honest Mark Wood and uh, fascinating insight into how things are in the England camp he's somebody that that, that can't really help himself when it comes to to saying what he thinks and and, and his views of the situation Michael Vaughan uh, alongside me you've been following it all and watching every game that England have played can you put your finger on what on earth has been going on (laughs) Oh, I think it's a culmination of many things. Uh, I think you can look at... Um, I think England got a bit complacent in 50 over cricket, thinking that this senior experienced group were just going to arrive in India and perform because over the last four years, look, there's been COVID about, so it's not been the same kind of platform from 15 to 19 when I think they played 88 one-day games and they played about 42, 44 in between 19 and 23. Around that time, the combinations didn't play together. Whereas from 15 to 19, there were seven plus players played in over 60 of those games. So they got used to the combinations and got used to playing together more consistently. Um, So you could look at that and England could have played a bit more 50 over cricket, particularly the games that they were playing. They could have played their senior players more to get used to uh, that combination working once again. There's one or two little changes in the side. So you could look at that. Um, You know, you look at the players' averages in Indian conditions. They've got some very, very good T20 IPL uh, averages, but in actual 50 over cricket, I mean, Josh Butler, for example, he averages 13 in 50 over cricket in India. Mm. You know, in the IPL, he goes in first for Rajasthan, he smacks it to all part. In 50 over cricket, he's batting it. Completely different roles. So, you know, Moen Ali averaged over 344 with the ball in, mm. in Indian conditions. He's got one wicket in nine matches. So you actually look at the skill levels of a lot of the England players in Indian conditions. Their records aren't as good as elsewhere in the world. So the skill factor, um, preparation factor, um, the mistakes in terms of 
decisions at the toss in this tournament have surprised me because I think they have got it wrong on a, on a couple of occasions. Afghanistan, they probably got a little bit complacent, think, right, we'll get Afghanistan balled out, chase it, under lights in Delhi quickly, net run rate. Afghanistan get a decent total and England just battered with so much tibin, timidness. And that's what really worried me against Afghanistan was the way that they were getting out in between 15 and before this World Cup was pretty much when England were getting out, they were getting out caught on the ropes, mm. having a right good go. Against Afghanistan, they were getting out prodding and, and kind of playing almost like the old school England way from pre-2015, which was concerning. Um, selectorally over the last seven years, they've been so consistent. You know, you've pretty much known that England played this white ball team and they play it again and they play it again and they play it again. <laughs> Somehow, and, so, and I don't know why in this World Cup they've had three changes, three changes, and, and they've almost kind of been searching. That's very unlike the England white ball team. And um, I have to disagree with Mark on the contracts because you don't have a World Cup every year. Yes, contracts are handed out at this time of year, but if the contracts weren't sorted before the World Cup, I believe that Rob Key should have said, right, we've not sorted the contracts fully for everybody. I'm sure many of them were sorted, but not everyone had agreed to their contracts. So he should have said, right, we'll go back to them at the end of the World Cup. And by the way, if they'd done that, some of those contracts might have looked a damn sight different to what they did at the start of the World Cup. And announcing contracts two weeks into a World Cup, and David Willis, um he's announced his re retirement from international cricket today. I just find it absolutely staggering that you've got a player who is in your best 15 for a World Cup at the start of a contract year, doesn't start the tournament, and then he comes into the team against South Africa and you're looking him in the eye and you say, come on, we need a performance from you to get England back on track in the World Cup. And by the way, uh, we've got 29 contracts that we've handed out, some to players on incremental contracts, who that means like Matthew Thrissio at Yorkshire, he gets a contract to get looked after. But David, you're going to try and beat South Africa, give it everything for the three lines. Uh, you've not got a contract. And you're the only person in this squad that does not have a contract. You're telling me that that does not affect the dynamic in the group. You're telling me that when you've got three players on three-year contracts, great, they've signed it. They'll be absolutely delighted. Then you've got others on two-year contract. Then you've got others on one-year contract. So again, I have to disagree with Mark that in the past has only ever been one-year contract. So this has been the diff difficult year mm. for the ECB, for Rob Key, because he's decided to go to multi-year contracts because they're, they're fearful of this franchise multi-year deal that these players keep telling the ECB they're going to be. I don't know whether those deals are coming. I honestly don't know whether these multi-year franchise deals are on the way, whether it's going to be next year, the year after. I'm not too sure. But I do know that when you get a dynamic of a group and you've got so many different players on so many different styles of contract, the dynamic of the group has changed. And in the past, there's been a one-year contract and there's been bands, A, B and C. It's been very, very simple. When you first set out for England, you start on band C and you work your way up to get to that band A, which is a senior player playing in all formats of the game. I'm ag agreeing with England, I, I completely get that, but when I saw the 29 and I saw so many, and then I saw that David Willey, and in the middle of the World Cup, you're announcing that the player that you're saying, come on, get us back into this World Cup, is a player that has not got a contract. So the ECB in England didn't feel that that player was worthy of one year mm. of a bit of a comfort blanket for him and his family to be protected by England. I, I find that that has to have an issue with the dynamic. The one thing I will say, and I loved what he said, it's the players. It was the players that won the World Cup in 2019. You know, the structure always gets a mention. People blame the 100, they blame the vitality players, they blame county cricket. It's nothing to do with that. England over the last 20 years, it, it, it has to be England's most successful period, whether it's Ashes Series wins, World Cup wins, you know, the Caribbean, uh, the T20 team, Paul Collins' team won there. Uh, the 50 over World Cup in 19, Australia just recently in the T20. This has been a, a, a hugely successful period for English cricket. And the structure was the same. Mm. Now, don't blame the structure. It's the players that win the tournaments. It's the players that win your Ashes series. This group of, of England players arrived here with more expectation from all of us. And it may be that people like me and you, Henry, have just got a bit complacent because we're just so used to seeing this 50-ball team arrive and play great cricket. We're so used to seeing it. They smack the ball out of the park. For whatever reason, I've no idea how it happens, but I don't know. There's not one batter in form. No. There's not one player that's playing to anywhere near the potential. And, and I can't have that you can just point the finger at the coach. I can't have that you... 
you know, you're blaming a rift in the... I can't imagine that this England team has a rift in the dressing room. There are a set of players that just get on... They, they might actually get on too well. Mm. <laughs> they might need a rift or two. Well, it looked, looked to me, Drum, the, the bowling innings against India that they thought, you know what, we're just going to go out and we're going to have some fun here. And they bowled really well. Yeah. They did a good job and then it all went it all went down the pan when they were when they with, uh, with the bat. But it is a sort of slightly tougher question, I suppose. Should Ben Stokes be here? Well, at the start, there was no one saying he shouldn't. You know, when he was uh, called up, uh, no, many were writing, me included, that, you know, he's won... Uh, the 2019 World Cup final pretty much single-handedly. He won England the T20 World Cup final in Australia uh, pretty much single-handedly. So this is a, a player that he just knows how to win the big moment. You look at him in the Ashes series, you know, the, 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 the hundred that he got at Laws, the way that he's captain. The one thing I will say is that when you've got a captain in Test cricket who is who, who has changed the way that Test match cricket is played and thought. Yeah, thanks very much. Well, and it still looks exactly the same as it did when the game... Oh, do carry on. Sorry. Yeah, when you've got a, a leader like Ben, the one thing that I would say is that the dynamic of the basketball, basketball group, you know, is very um, on the front foot. It's been absolutely fantastic. All right, it didn't win the Ashes, but they got very close to coming back from 2-0 down, which would have been remarkable. And what they did in the English summer was was great for the game and, and that was at the forefront of the leader mm. Ben Stokes Ben Stokes then comes into the England white ball team and back into it in the 50 over format as just the player and I just wonder whether some of the players are still looking at Ben he's the leader and then you've got Joss who's got to try and captain the captain from the test team who's just um, had, a, had a great time of it I, I don't know I'm just, I'm just trying to think and put everything together to, to why and if you add all these things up mm. You know, that, that might be the reason that the ingredients for... If you're making a lovely cake, you need great ingredients. And this cake for England at the minute, when you've got contract situations, you've got players out of form, you, you've got, you know, four years of not playing a lot of 50-over cricket together. You've then got a captain who's an incredible captain of the test team. We've all been talking Baz, but there's a book that's just been released mm. about Baz Ball. And then he's just in the ranks as a player. You've got all these contracts, differentials. Uh, you've then got the, you know, the different dynamic of the backroom team. You know, you look at the backroom team for the Baz ball, you've got Collingwood, Jeets and Patel. Triscothic's probably the common trend and Saker, but, you know, I look at this back, um, backroom team, do they need a bit more dynamic? Have they had enough information from, from India? I thought when they won the T20 World Cup in, uh, in Australia, Michael Hussey was a great appointment. Yeah. Local, brilliant, knows all the venues in Aussie. You know, could England have gone with a local Indian in the backroom team? Not talking about someone who can fling the ball down with a dog through. I'm talking about a real clever thoughtful uh, ex-Indian in play there's so many that mm. you could have had in your back I'm just trying to give them some kind of help in terms of how they could have improved but fundamentally it's the players it's the players that have, have, have lost form they've lost their their mojo mm. you know you can tell body language is, is nothing like what it was and understandably when you're losing and I thought the key game was Afghanistan because mm. Afghanistan's a game that England know they should have won uh, they played really badly and that is the, the disappointment from the team that the, the world champions that have come to the hardest place in the world let, let, let's be fair this is mm. the hardest place to win a World Cup in India there's not many teams come to India and win World Cups um, so they, they're doing it under you know hard circumstances but to think they haven't competed to think they haven't got close you know they beat Bangladesh other than that they've been hammered by every single team and if you'd have said to me five weeks ago um, I mean Australia I think playing good cricket I can't think England will get close to them uh, if you'd have said to me five weeks ago uh, you'll be commentating on England versus the Netherlands in Pune and I'm concerned uh, I'd have thought Emery I'm bonkers but I am generally concerned yeah. about them against the Netherlands because of the, the mentality of the group at the minute they just look shot to pieces a lot of comparisons have been made with the test side under Andrew Strauss 2010-11 that then led into the 13-14 Ashes debacle and how a team can reach a summit and how they continue that. Some have said that perhaps England's success in the 50 over World Cup, then the 20 over World Cup last year, actually can a player stay that hungry? How do you keep going? And whether that could be an element, natural cycle of yeah, it. Yeah, I mean it's a trend isn't it with English cricket? I mean you go back to 05, 2, you know, 6, 7 we were absolutely hammered. Mm. Similar story and you know, 2019 in the Ashes, you know, England had just won. The, I felt for them, they won the World Cup and about a week or so later they're playing in the Ashes. So they didn't have that kind of moment to celebrate mm. something extraordinary. Um, you know, English cricket and, 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 and English men's cricket has, has pretty much always been either a very good test team or a very good white ball team. That's what's been the trend over the last 15, 20 years. 
I think we've got better players that should be able to compete in all formats on a more consistent basis and you know you think for, uh, 15 to 19 everyone you know, put all their eggs into that World Cup and it, and it worked they got the, the World Cup win fantastic you know the eggs have not been put in the same kind of basket for this World Cup mm. you know England have got to be completely honest there's been a lot more T20 cricket T20 World Cup so you understand that but in the last year if they're completely honest the management the group how many discussions have they really had about winning this World Cup? Mm. How many discussions did they have about winning the Ashes and getting back on track in Test Match cricket? Probably plenty. Mm. Probably plenty. But I just felt that they, they probably just thought that coming to win, because they've got all the experience, and they went with all the experience. And again, I, I wouldn't change any of the players. Mm. You know, I'm not saying, oh, Jason Roy should be here. I'm not, I'm not going to say that. I thought they got the right squad, the right team. But fundamentally, they've arrived here and probably... The, just a little bit of complacency over the last couple of years in the 50 over game to swapping and changing uh, it's bitten them here in India we always look in these situations for who to blame Mark Wood blames the players <laughs> and it, it's very tempting to, to, to try and find a culprit for, for a situation like this because there are people back home who have invested time off to watch the games they will have invested the time to come over here and watch these games perhaps for some and I'll be thinking, well, well, why have I wasted that time? Because I, I expect better and I want someone to be able to say, well, that's your responsibility. Yeah, well, I, I don't believe that anyone should go. You know, you've got a T20 World Cup in a few months' time. Matthew Mott was the, the coach just a year or so ago where England won that World Cup in Australia. Why would you sack your coach who's only recently won you a T20 World Cup with a T20 World Cup coming up in a few years' time? What they have to do is understand that you know, I look at Ben Stokes, he refused a three-year contract. Mm. You know, why? Why have England not managed to get the England Test Match captain? Only two months ago, did an interview saying he's absolutely committed to play for England in the next Ashes series, which is two and a half years down the line. You know, why hasn't he signed that contract? I, I, that's what I want to know. What, what was the contract to Ben Stokes? Why was it so bad that he didn't want to sign it? And he's going to go back to the table next year in a year's time. I don't know what's happening with the TV deal. I don't know if more money's coming in. I don't know if it's a financial reason. But that was a little bit of a, a shockwave for me when, when Ben Stokes didn't sign that three-year contract. So um, I just think there's a few areas over the last few weeks that um, Rob Keeney's team can, can look. And they're young to the, their jobs. You know, they, They've done an incredible job with Test Match Cricket. It's been brilliant. Mm. But I do believe with the white ball 50 over team and particularly the contracts, I just think it's been a distraction. And they'll say it's not, but I'm sorry, I've been in team dressing rooms, I've been in team environments. And the one thing you have to do as a leader is stop the whispers. Mm. And when players are whispering, and they will be, and they would have been, because they'll be going to the rooms going, oh, what did you get offered? Mm. Oh, what was your deal? You know, the whispers is what creates that that little bit of focus which goes away from playing mm. you know and that's what you've got to try and get rid of in a team environment uh, there's no whispers in the basketball team there's nothing because it's all very clear very transparent and just over the last few weeks because of the performance levels because of a lot of things that's happened and a lot of things that's been going on the whispers have started and, and somehow Rob and his team have got to get rid of the whispers this has been a it's been a shocker let's be honest it's been a shocker but we can accept the odd shocker let's be honest it's not the first England 50 over team that's gone to a World Cup and had a shocker the problem that this team have is that we all expect it because they're the world champions does it affect their legacy? no I know they're world champions they've, they've won a, a World Cup at home um, you know I thought they had a great chance of, of creating a magnificent legacy you know you look at that Australian side that won the World Cup in 99 203 207 all right, in 1996, they couldn't win in the hardest place, which is here. You know, and they're a very, very good team, Australia. So that tells you how hard it is to, to win a World Cup in India. But um, no, it doesn't affect their legacy. They've given us seven years of magnificent 50-over cricket. Uh, but now is the time, and, and now is the time. Don't wait until after the World Cup. They've got three games remaining. So I want to see Harry Brook, Gus Atkinson, Cars. Just let's see the next generation, given that opportunity, because in 2015 to 2019, Owen Morgan with Trevor Bayliss got together with a group of players. Adil Rashid came in because they wanted to spin it, to spin it both ways, went more aggressive at the top of the order. Hales, you're in. Jason Roy, you're in. They now need that reset of a different set of players. And there's the likes of Duckett, Jamie Smith, Will Jacks, Phil Sock. There's loads of cricketers out there. So England aren't going to struggle in white ball cricket, but now's the time to reset the 50 over side with a new set of players. Thank you, Vaughan. We'll, we'll get there with, with working it out. I, I suppose it's one of those where we're all scratching our heads a little bit. Michael, thank you very much indeed. The thoughts there of Michael Vaughan, former England captain, of course. They're trying to work out what exactly has gone wrong for England. Plenty, I think, is the answer uh, over the course of the last few weeks.